In this video, I'm going to build an intro and outro control panel using anim curves. This actually leads from a question from Kyle in the comments about doing intro and outro animation separately. And I'll show you why it works far better, I feel, to do it separately. I've got a text set up inside the Fusion composition. We're going to be working on the Fusion page. And I've just got this text set up. I do my animation using transform nodes and that's because it then keeps the controls inside the text node available for the end user. So as we can see in the inspector in the layout, we've got the layout controls here and I want them to be accessible for the end user. So I'm going to use a transform node. We've got here the Simon Stansfield hotbar and I'm going to bring in a transform node from here, drag it onto the pipe so as the pipe changed color you can see there it's connected and, and first of all i'm going to have a look inside the inspector and just show you a few of the controls at the top we've got the center x and y and this is what i want to animate however if i right click on here and come modify with i don't have access to anim curves what i do have access to though is to come down to x y path this will then add the XY modifier. I can come up to the modifiers and I've now got the X and the Y split and extra controls in here. From personal experience, I find these a little bit buggy and I'm going to create my own controls. I'm going to come into the transform, right click and come to edit controls to open the edit controls panel. And we're going to make a new control and this is going to be the X X. I'm going to put it in the controls page, which is this page here on the right hand side, so I can see it. I want to be able to animate it, so I'll leave that checked. The default, I'm going to put 0.5, however, anim curves is going to override that, and I want a slider control, so I click OK. And you can see here now inside the inspector, we've got a slider control that goes from 0 to 1, the default of 0 0.5. I'm going to make a Y axis. I've now got an X and Y axis control. They're not connected to anything. And I'm building this node because I'm going to set it up and then I'm going to duplicate it. I need to connect these now to the center X and center Y. There's lots of ways of doing it. I'm going to use expressions. So we just come down to expression. And now we get the expression in here. We've got the point is the coordinates, what we're looking at, the center. And the first 0 0.5 is the X. I'm going to highlight that. And then I'm going to use the pick whip connect that now we've got the expression point x axis comma 0 0.5 which is the y axis so i'm going to highlight 0 0.5 and i'm going to pick whip do be careful there is a comma in the middle of there and if you take that comma out it will lock up the node and now these controls operate x and y so i've got the controls in here for my animation and I'm going to start with the X axis. I'm going to right click, modify with, anim curves. Come up to modifiers, and now we've got all the anim curves. Anim curves are extremely powerful. It means you can have a nice, smooth, easing curve. You don't need to use keyframes. That means the animation is totally responsive. You can use this on text, on a logo, you can use it on any media of any length and it will just respond and recalculate. Inside here is the anim curve controls and what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to open the spline editor. Now let's make some room. This is the anim curve, so I've selected here in the spline editor and we've got the anim curve here and at the moment it's linear, it just starts at nothing goes to one you'll also notice that the transition actually stops on based on the length of my comp and this is really designed for when you use a transition or you're building a transition on the edit page because you don't want it the full length of the media you just want it the length of the transition so i'm going to change this to duration and you'll notice now the line goes all the way across even if i set it into um, zoom to fit it starts um, it's actually starting at 
below one, but this is the frame here. And it's an infinite linear curve, I suppose, although it's linear. I'm going to change the curve, and you'll see in here, if we change the curve to ease in, then now we get the option to ease, but we've not set anything. In is the beginning of the animation, so that's here. Out is the end of the animation, which is here. And normally you would keyframe this, but you'd have to change the keyframes if you extended or shortened the animation. With anim curves, we don't need to do that. In the animation I'm going to make, it's actually going to start off screen, so I don't need curve on the beginning of the animation, but I'm just going to put sign on the end, and you'll see there's the curve. And this updates live inside this line editor, so you can actually have a look at what the curves are, just by coming down the list. We can actually see what the curves are inside the spline editor. I'm going to close the spline editor, bring everything back to where I want it. We've got, we've got mirror and invert in here, and we could use these to have an intro and an outro animation. However, at the moment, at zero, we can see half of the title. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come into the scale here. And I want the scale as 1, but I want the offset of minus 0.5. What you'll notice is the green bounding box is here on the edge of the actual canvas that we can see. So I've moved everything across here. And the advantage of that is we can have the text inside there, any size, any position, any shape. And the animation is going to work because it starts here off screen. The time scale is the speed, so if I play that, it's going to come in, and it's going to come in fairly slowly. And then it will stop, and it's actually the full length of the animation that it's working on. What I'm going to do is increase this to 5, that means it's going to come in quicker. But also it means it's come into the screen, and we've got plenty of time left to set up an outro animation. But I think that's a, a nice speed for it to come in. Maybe have it a little bit slower. Let's have four. Comes in a little bit slower. It will change based on the curve as well. So if I change this, for example, to back. And as you can see, it comes in, goes past the mark, and then settles. Sign for this example. As I was saying, with mirror and invert, invert is uh, the opposite. So what it does is it starts on the screen and then goes off the screen. Mirror, put it back at zero. What mirror will do is it will reverse the animation halfway through. So it'll come in, but go straight back out. And the problem with that is, is we may want this title to be on the screen for half a second, a few seconds, or a minute or so. And Mirror, although it does reverse the animation at the 50% mark, we've got to play with the speed and just go, it doesn't settle in the middle. We could keyframe it, but that defeats the object of having anim curves. And now we're back to our animation coming in and settling in the middle. So that is our intro animation. We can change all the parameters for the intro and we've got Full flexibility, it's responsive, it can be any length, it can be 3 seconds, 5 seconds, or longer, whatever you want. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to paste it. There is a possibility here we could use an instance, which doesn't make too much of a difference in this scenario, with using the CPU and GPU of your computer. So I'm not going to use an instance, but I am going to rename these. So we've renamed the first one X intro, that's our intro across the X axis, so left to right or horizontal. And then the outro at the moment is exactly the same as the intro, so it's not going to do anything for us. But if we select the outro and we come in to the anim curves, what we can do this time for the outro is all we need to do is to change the offset from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. And you can now see the boundary boxes on the right hand side. 
problem there is, is they're going to run at the same time. So if we come down to time offset and we set this, let's set this to 0.8. What this means is this anim curve is going to start 80% through the animation. And that means the title comes on, settles in the middle or wherever you want it, and then 80% it moves off. If we want this to go out quicker, what we can do, let's say we move it all the way down to 0.5, so 50% comes in, it settles, and then it moves off. The advantage of this is it's 50% of the actual length of the clip, not like Mirror. Mirror will come in and go straight back out because it's 50% of the animation. What this is, is it's 50% of the length of the comp, the composition that you've made. The advantage of having an intro and an outro, what we could do is we could have the intro and we could have it coming in really quickly. It comes in fast, however, it settles there and then at 50% it goes out. We could also change up the way it goes out because at the moment it's actually going out linear. Because in the outro, if we look in the inspector, we've got in and out here. What this is, is the beginning of the animation and the end of the animation. The end of the animation is actually off screen. So we don't need that on the outro. We come over here, we change it to this. Uh, but what we're going to do is change it to something different. or we'll change it to back. So this is going to come in nice and fast using a sine curve. It's going to go out using the back curve. So we get two completely different animations, one for the intro and one for the outro by using two transform nodes and the anim curve modifier. Next up then, we're going to make this so we can control the X or the Y. We're going to have the options. I'm just going to select these two nodes and copy them come up here and paste them. And then I'm going to rename these. I've renamed the Y intro and Y outro. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pipe from this merge node into here. I'm going to make this so we can have this as uh, X intro and outro, so horizontal or vertical. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add a switch. I'm going to add a switch at the moment. At the moment, these are actually still operating the X axis, but I'm going to do shift and the space bar. And I'm going to type in dissolve. And this is going to bring in a switch. I'm going to bring this one down. Background, I'll do that one and I'll do this one into the foreground. But by default, these are set foreground. That means my X axis is here. Now I want to change the Y axis. So I'm going to come into here. And at the moment, we've got anim curves on the X axis. So I'm going to double click there to disconnect it. Come into here, double click on there to disconnect it. So now these are just transform nodes with our extra controls in. On the intro, I'm going to go to Y axis, modify with anim curves, go into the modifier, duration, easing. And what we need to do again is we need to have this at minus 0.5. Now we're not seeing anything on the screen because of this dissolve node. We're actually going out to the screen from the media out. On the dissolve node, if we bring this to background, and what we've got is if here we can see the bounding box here and it's outside so again we've got any height and size and dimension or position in here and it will work and then i'm going to go back into the modifier and i'm going to speed it up a little bit and now this is the y intro so it comes in we just need to set a y outro so into the y outro Onto the Y axis, modify with anim curves, come into the modifier. And here we want this to be 0.5, and then the time scale to 4, and the offset. So we can't have it at the beginning because it's going to affect our intro. So let's set this at 0.5. If you think of this as a percentage of the length of the composition, so we're 50% of whatever length the composition is, then the outro is going to take place. But now what we have is comes into the screen and then at 50% it goes off. Both the X axis and the Y axis. So this is operating on the Y axis. And with this dissolve, which is a switch, if we just move it over here. 
We come in and move the background and foreground is um, a little bit clunky. So what we're going to do is inside the dissolve node, I'm going to create a checkbox. So I'm just going to go edit controls. Default of one is on and default of zero would be off. What I'm going to do is use an expression in the background foreground to connect it to the axis. So hover over the background foreground here, right click and select expression. What we'll then do, we're going to use an if statement and in uh, DaVinci Resolve and Fusion and Lua, it's IIF for the if and open parentheses. And I'm going to do axis because that's this control here. I'm then going to do this equals equals so it equals two. So we're going to have if it equals one, comma, one. So what we're saying is if access is one, so it's switched on, and the background foreground is one, comma, if not zero, and then close parenthesis. And what you'll see now, if I uncheck this box, this acts as a non off switch. There we go. That's how to put together an intro and an outro in the Fusion page. What the next stage would be is to make this into a macro but i'm going to save that for our next video i'd just like to say thank you very much for watching today and enjoy the rest of your day